make sure we're not interrupted. Uh, this is episode 60, uh, which is kind of a, a very, very large uh, milestone, at least to be. I think um, I've had long campaigns before, but not online. Uh, I think it's the large, it's the lengthiest online campaign I ever had, basically, um, at least by episode count. That's uh, so yeah, nice. Um, and all because of you, you wouldn't stick to the to the adventure plotline. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> we could have been done like ten episodes ago. At least. That's how we keep our GMs hooked. <laughs> Um, and actually, uh, you are in, in kind of a crossroad because in, in our last session, um, you have been exploring uh, the, the tower um, lo located in, in, a, in a small kind of abandoned village called uh, the Old Owl's Well. And you have defeated the Ibithids that were lurking uh, beneath the tower. And you freed the Tritons they have been uh, enslaving. Uh, you also captured one of the Ilithid's new creations. It's uh, a creature they call uh, an eyewitness. It's, uh, you have felt its ability to kind of be a hub of psychic energy, um, being able to communicate thoughts, feelings uh, for miles and miles um, in distance. Uh, and you have also learned that Anderist's father, Lord Uriel Shael, is actually brewing some sort of a scheme in, in Neverwinter. It seems like he is about to open a gate to a, a dimension called the Far Realm. Uh, it's the same dimension that the Event Horizon uh, kind of uh, went to if you, if you saw the movie and if you didn't, go see the movie. It's kind of an amazing movie. Yes. Um, so, um, you are kind of basically need to decide what you are about to do. You have, uh, Neverwinter, who is obviously uh, about to experience some, uh, ill effects of opening that, uh, portal, but you also have Harshnag, who is, uh, throttling to Mirabar to retrieve a map that will lead you and him to a temple called uh, the Temple of the Old Father, where answers about the giant uprising are going to be uh, given to you. You know Harshnag's uh, tendency to kind of uh, get involved in all kinds of mishaps. So uh, the question is, uh, what what do you want to do, uh, given the, the options you have and the things that you have discovered so far. Um, so you are still in the uh, in the in the caves below the the tower. Um, a lot of debris, a lot of uh, ruin that you have left. You still have prisoners locked up in cages. Most of them are babbling. Uh, you have some uh, uh, wary tritons that have just been uh, freed from their uh, mind controlling uh, masters, the Ilithids, and you have this strange creature who basically uh, asked you to uh, leave him be or at least uh, not to kind of continue and harm him. He will cooperate as much as possible. Uh, if I remember correctly, the, one of the Tritons asked you to uh, said something like, we need to get him to our protectorate. Um, and I think this is where we kind of stopped last uh, session. Yeah. No to, yeah, that, that was it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so w I remember w the place that we were at last, uh, uh, where we finished back then. I remember you mentioned there were all sorts of uh, musical instruments. So yes. uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to check them out to see if there's anything that's interesting over there. Okay. Uh, also, I remember that I had like a sending stone and. I'm not sure who has the, has the other part anymore, if it's uh, <laughs> my father or if it's uh, the, was it my wife or the back? I think I my wife your, used to have yeah, it. Yeah, I believe your wife then, has it. Okay. My wife, the Zentarim agent. Yes. 
Yeah. I'd like to start the ritual for detect magic. Okay. That makes While sense. everybody's doing whatever they're doing. Come on, priorities. We don't need to look at like musical instrument and everything. That's we we need to get going. Like we need to go to Neverwinter clearly, where I have to deliver some statues to a friend. But what about <laughs> that's important? What about Mirabar? What about Hasnack can take care of himself. But he can and take care might, of us. And we might still be able to get to Neverwinter, and then meet up with. Arsnek and Mirabar afterwards. I, I believe it was like Mirabar for, would happen first and then it was Neverwinter two days later? Yeah. The, yeah. Meeting, the meeting at Neverwinter, yes. But... We, we don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know how, how soon the portal is going to open there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I would assume the portal is going to open there when all the powerful elite are gathered. I, mean, oh, I don't know. Them. Don't know my father well, but if I was planning on killing and or destroying and or occupying, that's what I would do. Wait till all my enemies are in one location. Or oh, they might open up the gate before to pull in up allies from that place, depending on how big the gate is. It might not be like you know above this tower or wherever we are, right? Like down here. Can we? I don't know. I was teleport down here. Even if we go there, if there's a bunch of elite, powerful people there, can we even do anything? I mean, we we I'm sure we can make cause a lot of chaos, but can we actually get anything done uh, without without some guidance or some help? That's why I think going to Marobar might be of help. So, who the the meeting in? Um... That we're talking about is who exactly is supposed to be meeting i personally i don't think i was either paying attention i was there that day i think it's like most of the faction and all the like lords and it's the it's spies. the it's the lord's uh, alliance meeting uh but the lord's alliance is kind of a congregation of many faction agents and spies it's kind of a james bond you know semi-villain uh meeting uh, think, think uh, Spectre. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm torn. On one hand, I'd love to stop my father, and I mean, by his letter, he clearly doesn't see me as a threat, which I think we could use to our advantage. And I'd love to shove that right down his throat and kill him. Um, if we go there, he's got to die. Like, I'm not gonna let any of you stop me. And if you get in my way, then I'm sorry. Stop us? What I mean? I can mm -mm. kill him. Yeah, I know you're on. I know you're on board there. Yeah, but, I'll help you out. Um, um, however, uh, I do also have some business with the Oracle that relates to my mother and possibly bringing her back. And I feel like that should be a higher priority to me. But I'm really, really angry. But vengeance, vengeance, vengeance come on. Vengeance is a pretty sweet path, Anders. Yeah. I've been walking it for a couple oh. weeks now. And you yeah. like it? It's yeah. I mean, so have I. I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been going a little dark. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But yeah, yeah I'm saying is I got your back. Maybe we should just vote on it and do think, do something well at least. Do you want to maybe try to contact the black staff? I can like ask my wife to uh, pass a message over to her that she can contact us somehow. Can we trust yeah. the wife and can we trust the black staff? No, maybe. My wife definitely <laughs> no. The black staff maybe. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, I don't think any of us have magic that can. None of us have the sending spell. I'm guessing. Um, no. I have plane shift now. I have the teleport have spell. spell. We can just teleport there and then go teleport back. Correct. Teleport? Not teleportation circle. You have actual teleport. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Dude. We've been in the Black Staff Tower. I'm sure she's got no wards up whatsoever to protect it against teleportation. <laughs> yeah, we'll spaghettified instantly as soon as we come out of there. <laughs> spaghettified. <laughs> Poof of dust. <laughs> but we could, be, we could go near it. Um, yeah. But is it teleport, teleport, or is it a teleportation circle? Uh, I think with a teleport, you can take up to eight uh, creatures. Yeah, it's yeah. full on teleport, if... I think. 
if I, if I remember the spell correctly. Yeah, but don't you guys want to use the Nautilus anymore? Yeah. Yes, of course. It's such a cool ride. I hate it, but it's fast. Do you guys? Have, does it have like a warp drive in it that we haven't discovered? No, nothing beats good old teleport. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Forgar, you've been awfully quiet. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you want to do as our moral compass? <laughs> and future emperor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, this is going to be my land for sure. Is kingship uh, Lord Forgar the first? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where we should be going. I feel a little like we should be going towards Harshnag, but. Why? Because we agreed to help him and he helped us and that, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, just to the group, is Harshnag in trouble at the Oracle? I don't think and, so. And what are your reasons for wanting to go to the Oracle? I know why I want to go to the Oracle, but what do you guys want from the Oracle? I think... The... I, I want to help Harshnag. I, I think that's true. I... Perhaps I've this thought didn't come up in my head, but yeah, I, 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 we did promise. I did told him that I was going to help him, that I was going to go see the Oracle with him. Uh, and also, he told me to go see the Oracle because um, there's some problems I've been having. Don't worry, it happens for all of us. <laughs> yeah, well, it's happening to me now, so I'm going to go. <laughs> uh... Alias? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. I think we need a bit more intelligence about what's happening inside Neverwinter. So even if we do decide to go to Neverwinter, we might want to try to teleport outside of the city and not directly into some... Take the um, ship. So I mean, the other thing the, with the ship is that mind flares seem to know where it is. So as the as you say, uh, you know that we might need some intel about Neverwinter. Uh, the the Triton kind of um, the the one, the surviving one uh, approaches you, um, and he coughs uh, behind you. Uh, he doesn't want to kind of break the circle. You kind of all discuss among yourselves. So he kind of <clears throat> hope he has a mask. <laughs> yes I panic and cast a 7th level magic missile on him <laughs> no, I, 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 I say wait 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 uh, Don't yeah, you, you wanted to say something <laughs> he says um, our, our plan before the magic of the red wizard dropped our ship was to capture one of those and take it to uh, interrogation in our outpost a place we call Wallin. you know we have, uh, he Let's smiles and say deep deep underwater um oh. it's not, oh, far, is it? not very far um mid uh, mid um journey between ruathim and neverwinter holy hell that's uh, that's far uh, I mean, not so much for the Nautilus, but... And the exactly. Nautilus, is that a day trip or...? Uh, something like that, yeah, a day or a day and a half. He says, we have a special interrogator that can help extract information from creatures such as this. Obviously, they are way above our magical capabilities, but we, we have someone who can actually help us. We've been to oh, those right. islands, haven't we? We've been to? Near. Uh, we've been to islands that were between Ruathim and Neverwinter. Yeah, before, right? that was that was where you found that um, <clears throat> Ilithid outpost um, with all the um, tritons that were, uh, had, you know, been experimented upon. I mentioned this to him uh, about all the, the party horror we saw. Yeah, he says, um, my commander. 
uh, in chief, Zarlas, can explain what happened to us and why we are even so interested in the information this creature contains. It's a tale that you should probably hear for him, from him if you wish to. I have no idea what were your plans uh, coming in this, into this place, but uh, if you want, I can take you to our um, outpost and hopefully we'll all learn exactly what's going on in Neverwinter. So how um, many days until the... Uh... If we assume that it's happening at the meeting till the till the meeting, so okay, it's eight days. I have it written yeah, down ex exactly. And when does Harshnag? When do we need to be with Harshnag? Like, oh shit! Uh, I have written down that it takes eight days for Harshnag to reach uh, Maribar. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Maribar. Okay. So I guess the spy meeting happens also in eight days. Mm-hmm. I think, That's yeah, but convenient. I think it's in six days that Hashtag, Hashtag would arrive at Mirabab before the meeting, as far as I remember. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, tied, so, uh, yeah. So it, it, it is a real choice, like, you know, doing this, doing that, or uh, going to, uh, with this Triton, which kind of uh, throws a wench in either direction, because, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we clearly had, like, no problem deciding before you added more options. So, so thank you for that. <laughs> And so, I think we can do. How about we do this? We we can teleport to Neverwinter. Give give these guys uh, the Nautilus, so they could take this monster over to questioning, and then we can teleport from from Neverwinter over there. But we're just gonna have to find to to. The problem is how do we teleport over there if we don't know the place? We can't. We know the ship. Can't you teleport to Nautilus, no matter where it is? Yeah. If they know where it is. But we should have them. We should fly all fly to No Winter, since I have my statues on board that I need to deliver to my friend. <laughs> so we should drop those off in Neverwinter, and then they can take the. the Helping Nautilus. your friend move. Yeah. Oh my God, this is amazing. And you're, you're welcome, Ido. <laughs> <laughs> so Just to entertain you. That's why I'm here. I don't remember what the issue was the statue. Then remember. I have a friend in Neverwinter that wants to see those statues. Why? Because yeah, I wasn't here in that session, so I'm not sure what's going he's, on. He's, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, mm -hmm. he will examine the statues. Maybe he can learn something with statues, the weird mind control thingy, and then he can help us with that. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I know a thing or two about magical research, and it's going to take us take longer than a couple of days to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But eventually he can help us. I help I him. Help me. That's how friendship works, right? Yeah. Like I've been helping yeah. you guys, and eventually, you're going to help me, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna mentally and you know, telepathically talk to Quarian and be like, "He's acting a little crazy. What did I miss?" Uh, I, have no, I have no, no idea. I'm gonna sidle up to you, <laughs> kind of, so you can whisper in my ear. <laughs> Come on, remember, I also asked you to, to, to that we need to take care of the hill giants that uh, attack golden fields at some point. Yeah, yeah I that, remember. Yeah, agree to help me with that. I think that, golden that, fields just completely that, leveled that, already. <laughs> it's been so long. Yeah, that makes sense to me. The statue thing makes no sense to me. How did we even get them out of it? Like, how did you get them out of there and onto the ship? They're huge. I have I friends, carried half. friends that helped carry me, and I uh, went over to Pogar. Yeah, I, don't know. I have I trouble have saying now. I'm pretty sure Paleo's help also. Anyway, Quarian, what what did I miss? Um, honestly, I, I I must have missed it just to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, so question when you, is now when you investigated uh, Ven Venom Fang's uh, lair, yes, um, he had uh, four statues or five. I don't remember. Uh, of elven maids that were part of the protecting magic uh, on his horde and after clearing mm -hmm. the the cave you for some reason galen decided that these for some reason uh, yeah yeah I, I made a new friend uh, yeah. who politely asked me to deliver the statues it, 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 during the fight with the statues it looked like a vampire out of character <laughs> no, no 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 it was not a vampire like that's 
Did you all see this, friend? No. Nobody. No. Nobody. No. No, okay. So, so I don't some, this, the, maybe it's just a, like a mechanism of the statue to be rescued. Did you have a dream? I, no, my friend asked me to do it. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember it. Yeah. You <laughs> didn't give I'm, one. I'm, I don't write out names. I'm, why would I do that? Or maybe I did, but I'm too lazy to look up those now. Uh, so can I don't you, remember. I, 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 that was the name. Uh, yeah, can you yeah, describe I, them to me? Huh. Uh, yes. Um, maybe I did. Let, let me look if I actually made some notes. I think I did. Um, in in the meantime, uh, Rukvi, you See. feel someone touch touches your back. Yeah. Come on. So, <laughs> so as you kind of turn around, you get engulfed, and you have this um, uh, familiar smell of your uh, friend, uh, Zina, I think, and she oh kind of collapses. God. Uh, in your arms, uh, crying, oh, it was so horrible. The droids, they, they, I, I've joined them and they wanted to, to look into this place because they heard rumors about the wizard and then everything was so weird. I heard voices in my head and she simply kind of weeps in your arms. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, Zena? Zena, yes. <laughs> um, you don't remember? <laughs> No, I remember, I remember, I swear. <laughs> I just got hit in the head earlier today. Um, and I asked her, like, are you still um, linked to that infernal? Um, she uh, says, um, no, wh whatever they did to me, I, I don't feel her presence anymore. Really? Well, that's yes. amazing. Um. Well, you should join us. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen you in so long. Uh, do, do, uh, have you gone adventuring much? Can you? <laughs> no, I'm kill? just second level still. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I got to get you to safety immediately before we get attacked. Um, I really want to spend some time with you, but it, it just it logically. Um, I'm trying to save the world here. Yeah, maybe. so she, she kind of points up, uh, and you see two, um, um, you know, pretty, like, elderly elderly men climb down the chimney, um, wearing tethers, base, basically, um, and you recognize them as the druids, uh, as druids, sorry. Um, they kind of walk with, with wooden canes, uh, they descend and they kind of gather her and they look at you and say, uh, Thank you for freeing us. When Oakenstand he uh, hears about this, I'm sure he'll have something to say about mind flares roaming Neverwinter Wood and, and red wizards having their way with his territory. We're lucky to have you here and free us. Yeah. Maybe next time don't go into a red wizard's den uh, oh, trying to get her to safety, huh? Well, we didn't think it would deteriorate so much. And, you know, someone has to put up against evil. It is our job. It is our task to protect this part of the forest. You're right. I think I overstepped, overstepped my bounds. But um, we thank you. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for saving us and freeing this place of these creatures' evil. And he points at the and the eyewitness still kind of, you know, hovering uh, mm -hmm. knee, at knee level. And he says, we must destroy this abomination. It transmits our thoughts miles in diameter. We will. But wait a minute. first we're going to get some information out of it. And Wait don't thank me yet. Thank me when I finally eradicate this entire evil that's plaguing our forest. Wow, very much. Um, mental, quick mental whisper to Quarian. Who the fuck are these clowns? And what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to about the woman and the druids, but um, uh, to the, the druid, uh, yeah. is it 
you said it's broadcasting our thoughts. They have are they have called it they have created it to become a hub of psychic energy. We gather that much from whatever notes they the the red wizard, Roth, uh, they call him, uh, had in his adobe before they descended upon us. They have some plans to unleash it in Neverwinter. This is what we've heard. Unfortunately, we couldn't discover any any more because they took our minds. Um, I'm gonna approach the eyewitness. Yep. Walk over towards it. It's. I can't remember. We didn't find it. I don't. Okay, did we? Is it physically no, he, restrained? No, it basically surrendered. So it, it kind of hovers, doesn't do anything, doesn't attack. And uh, when he speaks, it's by like picking up words from thoughts of many people who are probably around you. So communicating with it, it's kind of tuning into radio stations. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna walk over and say, when they work to take you to Neverwinter, were you to communicate with them, or were they just going to unleash you? and you were to wreak havoc. What was their plan? Um, Remember, so it, your life depends on your answer. Um, so it, it tries to answer uh, by communicating a um, kind of this confused chain of words, uh, basically trying to say something along the lines, communicating with the portal or something like that or communicating with what's beyond the portal uh, but it's very very confusing and kind of mind twisting to even communicate with it uh, a few mm -hmm. sentences at a time and, and you get a headache um, the triton uh, looks at you and says we have a way of making sense of its confused thoughts we need to get him to the protectorate as I'm, soon as possible. Give me that. Go ahead. I want to approach the Triton who's just said that and take him aside for a minute and ask him, are you sure that he isn't going to broadcast his location to whoever is probably looking for you guys or it? Um, so uh, he looks at you kind of square in the eye and says, it is a risk we have to take. While they're talking, I'm going to telepathically communicate with the eyewitness and ask it, if I give you my thoughts and my words, can you project them to everybody around? Um, you get the sense of a, uh, like that it's, it, it is doing it right now, basically, just not broadcasting in frequencies that you guys can um, attune to. It's kind of an instinct to him. It's not something he controls can you do it to them and i'm just like I'm not gonna point but i'm gonna like kind of like you know can he broadcast to you guys to these guys um you you know what let's let's roll something that's interesting um yeah roll something i don't know what what arcana maybe as you kind of try to uh you know sink your brainwaves 21 21 so you get a sense that the the answer is yes okay so while they're chatting i'm gonna ask him to i'm just an experiment here um i don't want to hurt anybody <laughs> um i you say project can you project this and then i'm gonna cast cause fear on him Oh, that's nice. Um, so um, I think you all need to roll your saves, right? <laughs> all right. Cause fear is a wisdom saving throw. Things be 18. You get a plus four if you're around me. That failed. Even with a plus four? I might have succeeded just a second. With a plus four? Then I succeeded. And then this would be to like all the druids and like everybody yeah did. yeah everybody yeah okay dc was uh what 18. so, so we all started <laughs> a trample each other <laughs> out of the sky mr p 
New quest. So, run. Just run. So, so the druid uh, and the, and the triton kind of. Let's assume that uh, most of them kind of fail. They they recoil, look at the creature, um, and uh, point out and say, "Abomination! We have to destroy it! Look! Look at the, the powers he holds! No! No! Get out of my mind!" And Don't all kinds of these. Yeah. I will. Turn around slowly. They're afraid of it, not me, right? I assume so, yeah. Okay, then I and smile, like a really creepy smile. And then I'll <laughs> stop concentrating on the spell. Okay. And I was like, well, this could be really useful. To I think Rookby says do it out loud. Could says what? The question is can Dude. you control it? Can you control <laughs> it? Right now it's no. not what you want. I don't know if you want to keep, I, keep doing that. I would like to go over and attack the mind with this. Wait, wait, I wait, wait. I try to stop it. In between. It just attacked us. No, that was me. I... Okay, I would like to stab Anderest. <laughs> I try to stop you. Just a slap. What do you want? Oh, slap. I thought you said stab. What weapon do you have? <laughs> I don't know yeah, but a slap from a you monk. Know, that's a slap. Uh, a, 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 a <laughs> Flurry oh, of yeah. slaps. Yeah. Yeah. That's kill for <laughs> Anderist. He's made out of paper. One slap, ten point of damage. Ten? <laughs> uh, let me just say 14, 19. Yeah, Can I try to stop him? He's unconscious. <laughs> and then I'll say, oh, uh, uh, wait, I have... Wake up! I, I'm still mad at you. Come on, I have Stop doing that, I'll say. And I'll... Are you doing like this slapping competition? I, I, I was getting <laughs> with my I've foot. seen it. Like, I've on, seen wake it. up. Not uh, a... He's legitimately <laughs> unconscious. He had eight hit points so, left. Yeah, so, so yeah. this this kind of uh, commotion between Galen and Anderest, to that, uh, the druids join in, uh, the, the surviving triton, Xena joins yeah. in. Everybody are shouting, pointing at the creature, no. pointing okay. at you. Okay, I'm gonna make a death save because I figure I've been I've been around. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm shout. Gonna everybody, scream. shut up. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna scream, shut up as well. Uh, to just intimidate everybody to shut the hell up. I'm casting Goodberry in the meantime, and I'm feeding him. Goodberry on his throat. Yeah. Close his nose. <laughs> I am walking awesome. away from this shit show. Ooh. I don't know where away is, but I'm gonna hit a door and I am leaving the room. Did you give me a hit point there? Yeah, Paleo. After all you. those good berries, I think you're good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get um, I'm one. How many good berries did you get me? Just one. <laughs> just one. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> he, he just wanna play it safe. <laughs> So just just one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Dude, it's not going to make I'll, much difference. See, that I'll, one I'll, 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 I'll be like, like yeah, is, I probably did that. I'll get my hand over here. Yeah. Don't <laughs> attack your... It wasn't an attack. I was about to say friends, but then I say allies <laughs> instead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> allies. Uh, you know. Yeah, co-workers. It wasn't an attack, and, and you rarely succumb to those things. So. Uh, Anyways, I'm going to so, stand so, up and I'll, I'll on me. travel together. And I ran into <laughs> things. Fear? Fear's not an issue for you. No. It's not. I'm um, not afraid of anything. Pelias, oh, me. The, the druids, uh, one of them approaches you and whispers at your ear, your friends have a wicked sense of humor. This, this is a vile yeah. thing he did. You're talking to who? To Peleus. The druids came to Peleus and kind of whispered oh. at his ear. A wicked sense of humor. It's yeah. it's a vile yeah. thing. We thank you for saving us, but... But we won't uh, put up with such a behavior for long. We have to destroy this creature. So that was a, uh, that was a spell that targets one individual, and I was able to target all of you through him. I'm just saying, yeah. perhaps we could take the eyewitness to Neverwinter and turn it against them. But how do you know that it will continue to be cooperative? 
It seems to care about its own life. Maybe we shouldn't speak when about this in front of it. Just when, when it's alone, yeah. What do you think is going to happen to it if it, they drop it in the middle of this spy meeting and it summons whatever's on the other side of that gate? It's going to die. It's, this is a suicide mission for sure. It's not meant to survive. It's not stupid. It knows that. We um, set it free afterwards. I, I really don't think it's a good idea to send it. And I'm looking at Andres and I'm saying it to Neverwinter. <laughs> I tend to agree. I think I think it's it's better off to send it uh, over to over with the Tritons yeah. for for interrogation. Let's kill it right now or send it with the tritons. Mm -hmm. What do you? What do you? What is it? I, I vote yes. Let's send it with the tritons and let's oversee the procedure because if we go there, we have eight right. days. We can fly any. In eight days, we can make it to Neverwinter or we can make it to uh, Mirabar. And by interrogate, they mean torture. We've seen what these tritons do. Yeah, so they, they probably learn from have... the elithids. Like this come was... on. You talk to your friends with medical mind torture. I ended the spell immediately. Yes. It was an experiment. Good. It's my fault you can't handle it. Galen will remember this. <laughs> yeah. um, next, come on. Next my week, concern next is that we're, 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 we're sending this thing off to be tortured and killed or killed on the spot. And. By all accounts, it's actually innocent of anything. It was created here for a single purpose. It was defending itself, and now what? Dude. I yell back through the door that I'm just, like, sitting on the other side of reading my Bible. Then do we <laughs> banish it? Yeah, I would, to where? I would prefer that, but... I don't know. Where would it be banished to? If you talk about the banishment spell, it only lasts for like a minute. Unless wow. it's from another plane and then it's permanent. Yeah. It will go into that chaotic, crazy eyeball plane, probably. <laughs> yeah, in which case, as long as you maintain concentration for the minute, then it stays there forever. Well, really? until it's summoned back. Yeah, yeah. If it's from another plane, banishment sends it back there permanently. You know, if, mm -hmm. it, if we're concerned okay. about the morality of it all, I, had, I uh, head over to that creature and I ask it okay so you yielded what do you want now um he says uh in in a garbled way of multiple voices and accents no more pain are you in pain right now um so it says Voices. So many voices. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let's, it... let's end the pain. Yeah, do we <laughs> end your pain by killing you, or is there another way? Uh, he's, he, um, well, roll your insight. Can we, can we assist him? Yeah, uh, sure. Five. I mean, five. No, never mind. I rolled five. What do you roll? <laughs> <laughs> five, five. Crit. Um, so you, yeah, not not the way it, it works, but you get a sense that um, he doesn't want to die, but maybe he doesn't know how to kind of help itself, uh, or maybe he doesn't want to say. You're not sure. So it, mm -hmm. the voices that it hears are our our thoughts, right? I mean, it, there's too many people around here. Uh, you you have a feeling that uh, it's a lot more because when he when it communicates, it's not by using your voices. So you have a feeling that he can kind of reach out and hear maybe, you know, tens of thousands of voices from far far away. Yeah. Um, also. Um, you all are aware that illithids are like aberrant creatures. They're not uh, of this plane. But this creature, it seems, uh, um, at least according to the evidence that you found in this tower, uh, you believe that it was created here. 
So it, it, it isn't, you know, native any, any place else. Right. It was created by those creatures here. Yeah, so they created it and sentenced it to a lifetime of pain. To, and we're deciding whether we're going to condemn it to more pain and death or just death. Um, like Odrin, the, the Triton, kind of, uh, you can you can see the muscles uh, like here as he kind of uh, bites on his, uh, on his own teeth. But he says... Uh, if you want to end the pain of this creature, we have to take it for interrogation. Once we are done with it, we're done with it. No more pay for him, for it, and we'll know exactly where to strike. We can't simply invade Neverwinter because it will be um, not taken in the correct manner, but by the city's officials. We have to be precise dealing with this yeah i don't disagree with that i'm just not sure that your interrogation techniques are what's needed here it's cooperative you you really you're worried about that you with your scalpel and everything yeah <laughs> what yeah questions, I am. what questions would you like to ask it where the portal is located who operates oh. it and how I'll turn and look at the eyewitness. It, it yeah. tried to communicate before, but it didn't work. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It couldn't understand their language. They have like some, some, something that they can, uh, that understands the eyewitness. They can tune it in. Yeah. This so, method that they have, that you have, and I'm speaking to the Triton. Um, tell me more about. Is it painful? Are you going to hurt it? Re uh, roll your insight again. And if, okay. if if one of you wants to assist, then just yeah. one of them. Okay, I got uh, 30, 30, 28. Better than me. Uh, okay, I think we're misusing this mechanic here, but that's fine. <laughs> let's, let's assume it's fine. Wait, why? Uh, well, I think an assist yeah, simply means I, that uh, one of you gets an advantage on the roll. That's it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, but that's oh. that's fine. In my That's games, fine. I generally don't play that people can assist with insight because we would have to sit there and talk about it. Yeah, well, no, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, that, that's so fine. I, that's fine. Oh, sorry then. No, no, that's fine. I, I think it's like it's okay. So you you kind of you two look at it, uh, look at the Triton as uh, Andres kind of asks this question, and you, you have a feeling that uh, he doesn't like. He doesn't want to disclose an answer because you kn he knows that you won't like it um, mm. as you ask like what's what's the way how you are doing it and he he simply says um, Zarlas will make sense of it I'm I don't want to step uh, beyond my authority to reveal our methods here and frankly uh, I'm I'm I might not be in in the loop. With regards to that, you have to meet Zarlas too. Who's Zarlas? Zarlas is um, our protectorate ruler. Inquisitor. What? The Inquisitor. The Inquisitor, yes. Uh. Listen, we've asked you, we've asked your help to raid this outpost. You knew that we are going to take one of them to interrogation. The fact that you are bonding with this creature is beyond me. I am really grateful for your help. You saved my life. And in return, I want to save yours. Give me this creature. Give me the Nautiloid. And I will do what we came Pardon? here to do. Wait, 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 wait. You want us to give you the nautiloid and the creature? So our only reliable means of transportation and our only, at this point, ally who has any kind of information or only creature here who has any kind of information, we're going to just give it to you because you tritons have been super useful so far. You uh, guys he haven't looks done at, anything. Everything he, that's set your mind to, you've been destroyed and we've come in and cleaned up after you and saved the day. So I think so anyone is going to be doing 
Yeah. So you thought he was uh, going to address uh, Quarian for a moment, but then, as you kind of said, you know, they're not doing anything. Something within him snaps, and he looks at you and says, "We have been traveling from the depth of the abyss, far from this planet, searching for something that slithered." Through our plane, into yours, we came to protect your world from this thing, and while doing so, we found that colony of these creatures, and he points to the Ilithids. They were everywhere, we lost half of our men, good men and women, fighters all to these creatures. We've been fighting them for generations, and now that they have been on the uprise, that we have a chance to finally seize one of them and get an insight to what they're all about. Plans that they have been doing, running for ages. You, you tell me that we are doing nothing? We have spent eons chasing those creatures in the abyss. We, we, and you can, he kind of foams at, at the mouth and then he kind of regain controls of himself. And then he kind of relaxes and says, I'm asking that you yield this prisoner to me. Provide a means of transportation. And then he looks at Quarian and says, you can teleport wherever you want. We don't have this kind of magic. The nautiloids that we have stolen from those creatures are a weapon we use against them. Their weapons that we are using against them. It's our only chance to get this creature to the Protectorate safe and fast enough to save the people of Neverwinter, not our own. You know, do uh, it for uh, us. Yeah. As an aside, we've known a Triton before. Aren't Tritons from the Prime Material Plane? Aren't they native to the ocean of the South Coast? So that, that's a great uh, question. This is basically like the, the common knowledge that these are basically, you know, sea elves. Uh, but mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it just told you something that uh, no one really knows. Maybe it's something new, something that you haven't considered before. Yeah. Did it, did it seem truthful when he snapped? Yeah. He seemed bad, crazy when he snapped. Uh, um, we um, we from we not from this. What? What plane are you from if you're not from this? You said you were saving our plane from destruction. Is it not your home too? He says, and he, he looks at you and says, Zarlas is a much more, uh, is a better communicator than myself. No, we are not from this plane. Our people have arrived here from a place far away. We only call it, uh, in the only name that we uh, know it to be, the Abyss. It's a universe of water. Some parts of it are so deep that even our people are afraid to travel there. Something, something evil punched through the veil and slithered from the abyss into this plane. We followed it to make sure it doesn't do harm. And ever since then, we've been trying to understand where it is, what it is. We found evidence to its evil in many places around you. Uh, but now it seems it has stirred. This is the first well, time we've got close to capturing one of its own agents. So we believe. I'm convinced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we should clearly give this. Andres is not. Andres was really. You're really not acting like yourself. I think you're mind controlled by this creature. <laughs> I, Rupi uh, turns to the druids or somebody around here and said, "Well, let's get some wooden planks, let's build the pulley system, and haul this, haul this lump of." I think it can fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no I, I'm going to uh, go to move, uh, approach the creature, uh, whatever we call that creature. The eyewitness. The eyewitness. Yeah. I, I, His I, name I, is Glorp. <laughs> Glorp. I ask him if he's is if he will be willing to cooperate with these people. They need to interrogate you. It's in order to save this plane of ours. 
Will you be willing to cooperate? I'm not saying it's going to be uh, easy for you or even convenient. It might be painful. Are you willing to cooperate with them, given that they will help help end your pain at, afterwards? Will they? And I look at the Triton. Um, so suddenly, uh, when Quirin kind of talked to the eyewitness directly, the, the uh, Odrin becomes very, very still. Uh, you can almost... Um, he, he, his kind of facial expression goes blank as he's very, very... Um, uh, trying very hard to, to do something. Like, he's very, very concentrated. Um, and the, the eyewitness witness looks at him and then looks at you, Quarian, and then you have a feeling, and it's not, it's not telepathic communication. The creature can't communicate this way, uh, at least not with you. Um, you have a feeling that this creature is afraid um, as he looks at uh, Audrin and his kind of um, eyes on, on their, uh, you know, fragmented uh, stalks mm -hmm. hover between the Triton and that horizontally floating illithid that is still in the room, kind of, you know, Hmm. Uh, I think, yeah. guys, could you check up the Illithid over there? I think he's mind controlling somebody. Could somebody please stab him a bit more? I immediately just launch myself. Wait, 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 no. Yep. So you, you kind of uh, stab it once more. Green, blue blood kind of uh, uh, squeezes out of the body, but it, it is dead. Um, Quirin, you, you believe? Yeah, it, this is it is what it is. Uh, this mm -hmm. is this is this is the message that you have received. Uh, he's, creature. He's, he's trying to compare the two for you. The mind flare and the Triton. There's no difference in his mind between the two. The eyewitness is who's reading this Triton's mind right now. Mm. He's probed him. He knows what's going to happen to him. And he's saying that the I, the mind flare and the Tritons are no different to him. He's just a scared animal. It's a, it's a monster. You said it's the same evil. thing. At least Forgar did, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I, yeah. uh, do you guys want to go with him? Yeah, I think if I'm, if I'm, I'm going where Glorb's going. I'm, for I'm this not mission. willing to subject him to, to torture and then death. Mm. We can go with him. We can, if, can protect if we him. have to go with him to protect him, I'm down with that. But just know that we might have to fight our way out of a Triton stronghold. We can teleport out of there eventually. But but yeah, we might need to fight our way out of it, of course. Yeah, It's going to be torture. Just because they've been trying to rid, supposedly rid this world, we don't know anything about them. We don't even know where they're from now. We always assumed that this, so we found out now that an entire nation... Yeah. has been lying to us forever and that their this enemy is come from them from their world so i mean i'm just saying we need to be on guard with them they may be not the, the allies we thought they were okay. did we ever so... see them as allies well yeah before we i, I mean really I yeah. saw fighting the same fight yeah. as us that's just me yeah. okay so if you guys are on board i think this is what we can tell uh Audrin, his name is? Yes. Uh, is he still held in the grips of something? Um, no. So once uh, the creature kind of uh, stopped referring to it, he kind of relaxed. And what he looks at you. Hmm? I'm going to look at Audrin. What happened just there? Uh, he says, I don't like the way you treat this creature as it is. One of us. It is. I really don't care what you like or don't like. I'm not here for your approval. Well, we just saved you, so you should show a little bit of deference. However, I think we've all agreed that we'll accompany what we glorp. <laughs> and if if you guys, if your people 
are just going to subject him to more pain and then death and or abuse or servitude that we're not going to accept that. Uh, he says, I am sorry for my eruption uh, earlier on. You are most welcome to visit our outpost, and I'm sure Zarlas will make it seem a lot clearer than I am. As I said, he is a far better communicator and negotiator than I am. I'm just an aging military uh, officer, not a diplomat. And I'm yeah, sorry and for that. We should, be, uh, we should surrender the Nautilus either, or Nautiloid. It is, uh, it is your taking, um, but I would appreciate a fast travel. Um, okay. You can come. Okay. Mm. Okay. So. so uh, just one more thing. Uh, we just wanted to, at the start of the session, we said we wanted to search anything yeah. interesting over there. Yeah. So, um. I'll be quick about it. So you do find, um, uh, wait a minute. Uh, one of the instruments, the musical instrument, is indeed a magical. Um, so it, it is a, a small harp, not, not very big one. Um, and when you kind of, um, uh, how do you call it? When pluck you it, pluck, it. pluck it, yeah. When you pluck uh, its strings. Uh, you can create um, special kind of minor effects with it, illusion effects. So you can create a spectral dancer that dances to the music that you create, or butterflies, or gently falling snow. Um, so it, it is a minor magical item, but uh, but it is magical. With regards to other uh, uh, things of interest in the tower, so just by kind of quickly ruffling things up while you prep the the nautilus uh you find um several uh spell scrolls and potions um amongst all the the rabble and the ruin that you have uh, created because of all your acid spray spells and fireballs etc uh and a hefty amount of gold so just kind of to be quick about it so uh, 13,000 uh, gold pieces, all in all, in all kinds of, uh, you know, minted coins. I'll put it in our uh, chat box. And um, I'll just write the spell scroll and the potion that you have found. So it's a spell scroll of insect plague and a potion of clairvoyance. Nice. Um, Uh, yeah. Uh, so intense. Yeah. So as you kind of uh, you know gather all the items, so part of this uh, treasure is you know special cases and and you know uh, uh, statues or figurines, and um, there was a laboratory there, so some stuff from that is kind of salvageable. Um, so if you want, you can take some of this gold and recreate it uh, as all kinds of um, bits and um, artifacts that if you if you find them interesting and useful you can use it for that um, so um, Audrin um, boards your nautiloid and uh, as you all board it he kind of looks around and says have you given it a name no mm -mm. Um, what about so he, um, Rukvi's friend there? What happened to her? Sorry. What? Rukvi's friend. Uh, <clears throat> so if you if you want, um, uh, like the druids say, we are uh, about to go back to Oakenstand. If uh, you would rather your friend not suffer the pains of joining in your doomed voyage with this creature, uh, we would very much like to continue and be her ta caretakers. I think, uh, uh Rupi, uh, yeah, if he's telling me this, I'll, I'll ask her, you know, what, um, what are you, you're free now. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? 
Um, so she looks at you and she looks at the, your ship and at your friends and says, I'm not sure I know you anymore. I, I need time to think. I, I've got to be honest with you, Zena. I don't think we've ever known each other. Um, sounds like a breakup to me. <laughs> I think we need some we need some time apart. Uh, it's, it's me. Uh, in fact, I I hear something dramatic here. Um, I I take out my my the 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 symbol of um of Shantae of Shantae that I had before. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at it and it doesn't look like it used to look, but it looks just like a bent piece of metal now. Um, and I just give it to her and I say, just hold on to this. And if I, if I, if I, if I'm ever bent to have this again, then I'll, I'll find you again. Uh, she, she nods and then join with uh, the droids who, uh, part ways with you, not before one of them, uh, hands Peleus a small um, feather. Uh, it's uh, white, uh, its tips are black, and uh, it is uh, really sturdy. You find it really sturdy uh, for kind of a small feather. And uh, it says, I mean, he says, um, you're headed into a dark place. We've heard you talk with the Tritons. He said that their outpost is somewhere deep under, underwater. Our hearts are, you know, they belong to the land. The land stretches even beneath the ocean. I surely hope that your journey will be a successful one, but if it isn't, he hands you the uh, feather and says, you can bite it, its tip. Inside it, there is something that may relieve you of pain and suffering. Um, <clears throat> you might need it. You're muted. Yeah, muted. Um, I, I look at the feather, I'm like a bit um, confused, I guess. No, I'm like, okay. <laughs> did, he, did he just like give me like poison or something? I'm not, <laughs> like, or I'm like, like in just a very powerful opiate. <laughs> okay. Either a crack pipe or a cyanide pill, one of the two. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Without labeling the medicine, like it's kind of yeah. It's up to you, Tony. I'll, that's, I'll, how, that's how they get you hooked. Watch out. Mm -hmm. I'll go over to Rookie and like like nod him. Like, come on, man, you really should have given your girlfriend something nice instead of that, you know, full piece that you had there. Like, I'm sure you could have found some nice jewelry in that pile of loot we just got. Zena, <laughs> mm. uh, like, take some. Please grab some. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much. I can't hold all these all these coins. <laughs> I, I give her like I give her like five hundred GP. <laughs> she she looks saying. at the pile. I want half. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, she she you find her kind of uh, un unattracted to all this gold. Um, I uh, said yeah. jewelry. Not just money. It's, it's not a whore you're paying. Oh, uh, I did not know. I'm, I'm always like, like look uh, busy at something else. <laughs> so uh, you you believe that she she kind of um, views it differently than than most adventurers. This is kind of blood money. She doesn't want anything with it. Um, and you you find her, you know, maybe uh, closer in worldview to the druids that have been her companion for a long time now so maybe she kind of you know um you know we're taught something uh she had a journey much like you had your own so this is where we part ways i have like a, a random question um is the the is there actually jewelry in between or is it everything just gold 
Uh, whatever you want. Like uh, I so kind that of can be like gemstones or something. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Ooh. Okay. Cool. I want to get some diamond out of here. Yeah, exactly. So if if you want, that's uh, just to kind of keep it keep it short. Um, so so... Rugby is like wearing like huge gold necklaces, a lot of rings and everything, and like <laughs> oh here, there's also these coins like here, and that just throws that at it. If he turns into Mr. T overnight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <laughs> Of course, you fool. <laughs> okay, so um, you are. Let's assume that you kind of all board your nautiloid with with your uh, newly acquired friends, uh, Audrin and Glorp. So you are uh, in the submarine with uh, a couple of statues, making your way uh, actually west towards uh, Ruathim. Um Audrin. Uh, approaches Aquarian as you combine with the, the submarine and he is horrified to learn how you actually fly it uh, obviously he didn't expect he didn't expect that um, so he, you're waiting everyone's a critic these days <laughs> another goes through here or through the other side and yeah. <laughs> um so uh you uh he, he kind of helps you to navigate the ship uh you basically kind of fly uh close to sea level trying to avoid ships trying to avoid you know uh um air traffic basically um and after days a day's worth of travel uh you can all guys like uh, you know heal or do whatever you want it's kind of a long rest for you um Cool. All right, hit points are back. Now I'm ready to rumble. Ready to nuke some fools. Oh, I heard it was time to slap Anderis again for how he's been acting. <laughs> stabbing me. I'm, I'm not stabbing you. I'm just poking you with the finger, like, like, like in the chest. Like, come on, Anderis. And it does it every time. Yeah. And I'm spending my diamond to bring you back to life over and over. <laughs> Speaking of torture, uh, where do we keep uh, Glorp? Is there a cargo hold? I assume there is because we got a pile of treasure and statues. Yeah, we well, we can... buried we 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 uh, buried the last treasure we got. Oh, That's okay. That's buried at Oaken's Sand. But the but their statues are in a cargo hold. I'm guessing. Uh, no, actually, the, the statues statue are all, also in a cave. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's uh, not buried in a cave. The rest they buried <laughs> and will they will find it again. <laughs> oh, that's right. We all right. How do we remember? Uh, so original question: Where's Glor? <laughs> okay, so I I made I put some newspaper down. No, um, I want to talk to Anderist and Corian. Um, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> put some. I look at my newspaper and I I look at you guys and I say, so that's the best it, joke you've had in months. <laughs> damn, I've been trying months. Okay. Um, okay is there some? I I remember from my um physics class is there some some sort of fairy day cage we can build around glorb so he doesn't broadcast our our speaking constantly can i make an arcana check on that yeah 14 i don't i mean i'm sure there exists something like that um we could also if there was a we could put him in a pocket dimension like there's all sorts of spells that I don't have access to, but there's all sorts of spells that can create pocket dimensions that creatures can live in, but that's temporary. Um, that would prevent him from broadcasting in the prime material plane. But I'm sure there's all sorts of things and items that would exist that would stop it. I just don't have them and know how to build it. Yeah, so you do believe that there are ways. Uh, obviously, most of them are probably beyond you uh, at at the moment. Um, this powerful psychic energy that this creature is was created to to tap into is something that you have never seen uh, in your life. So probably with with uh, some research, you might find a way, but uh, definitely not something that you can kind of you know pull out of your sleeve. Mm -hmm. I have a question for for Glorp, actually. Now, now that I think about it, um, can you sense more 
eyewitnesses like you? Like uh, yourself? So he... Uh, he says no. If I remember correctly, you destroyed one, right? In uh, in the yeah, tower. Yeah. There were two. Okay. Yeah. So he says no. Okay. I mean, he'll... He know that he doesn't have the ability to, or that he just doesn't sense him right he now? He doesn't sense. Okay. Um, at some point during the journey, uh, Audrain kind of points you uh, at a uh, at one of the controls, basically um, telling you to dive, dive, dive. Um, um, and he kind of nods and say and says, uh, "We'll have to be quick about it." We won't have a lot of time once this creature is within reach of our protectorate. Uh, How come? We'll, its creators will be coming after us soon after. Hmm. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to spend the trip with Glorp. Mm -hmm. Try and communicate with it. And I'm going to experiment <clears throat> with... Um, the message can trip, but also comprehend languages, detect magic, disguise. Well, I don't disguise self as an elder can detect magic, uh, identify mage armor, casting them with Glorp. And I'm just going to try and literally, I just want to sit there and, and talk with them and try and learn how to communicate with it better. But okay. I also don't want to let Glorp out of my sight because I don't trust the Triton. Okay, good. Um, so. Uh, like your efforts bear fruit you think that you are able to communicate with it uh to to a greater extent than uh, anyone else so far using all your magic and the time that you have spent uh doing so um you do believe that this creature is very kind of young it was just created so uh, it doesn't know a lot more than uh more than its basic instincts but you do have a a feeling that it's kind of sentient and you know it's not sure about it's it's like a kid you don't uh, get any sense of evil or good in it it's just there trying to survive and maybe learn uh, but obviously language is a huge barrier to kind of uh, overcome and um, one of the things I want to try and get from is did they give it a name uh, you don't think so no well, it's Glorp now. Okay. I, I we give it a name. Uh, you you feel that it's trying to kind of taste the word, uh, savor it, so it, it kind of enjoys the the fact that he has a name now. Um, so you uh, breach the water, and your nautiloid becomes a submarine again as it kind of uh, sp uh, shoots through the the sea and goes deeper and deeper uh, you actually never have been so deep in your life uh not in a submarine or anything else uh beneath water you believe i mean at some point the submarine is kind of you know uh descending at a steady fast rate for over four hours uh, and you know it's it's speed like it's airborne speed so um at some point some of the um in some places in, in the submarine, things begins to crack. Um, the tentacles kind of retract into the, the hull to uh, avoid being damaged. And you feel that the pressure of the, of the deep, dark water around you, uh, they turn from you know, bright blue to blue, from blue to dark blue, and then to utter darkness, basically, um, as you lose sight of the sun. Uh, and from that blackness, suddenly a megastructure emerges. Uh, at first you thought it was a, um, a jellyfish, but then its true scale and size reveal itself. It is a massive um, structure made of um, coral reef. That's the, like, I think this is the the right term mm -hmm. for it, but it, in a massive, massive scale. And it's uh, uh, projecting light, uh, kind of soft bluish, greenish hues that color the waters around it. And it, it is a point of light in all this vast sea of darkness. You can see swarms of fish 
uh, move around it. And as you actually move in, you see that some of those swarms of, fi of fish are actually swarms of tritons that are going in and out of this uh, structure. Um, and uh, some of them are riding huge fish. Some of them are simply swimming there. Um, and all are going in and out from spe a specific uh, area within this megastructure and um, Audrian directs you, Corian, towards that uh, opening. Okay. I bring, bring us in. Um, and he asks you to tune in to a specific channel um, using one of the devices of your Nautiloid and broadcast um, that... Um, Basically, you know, the, the eagle has landed or something like that, like a code name to alert that um, you are in with a prisoner. Okay. Can I, uh, like, uh, save that channel into the Nautiloid for yep. later? Right. Yes. So as you broadcast this, something kind of happens. The greenish-bluish hues become reddish, and they start to pulse, and all the tritons who were simply swarming around start to form into uh, formations, like patrols, and uh, like, uh, you know, like um, soldiers waiting and watching the, dark, the deep darkness. Uh, looking for something. They clear out the way for you and you enter the rift as it pulses in um, reddish light. At this point, Audrin asks you, do you have the ability to breathe underwater? Nope. Good question. Oh, he... wait, maybe after being in the Nautiloid we can? I remember we could. Right? He says, never mind. Broadcast... <laughs> Uh, and he gives you another signal. Uh, they will create uh, pockets of air for us in the reef. Um, as uh, the ship comes in to this massive hallway, uh, a, a thin sheet of uh, sparkling water kind of uh, separates in front of you. The ship comes in and then the sheet... Uh, um, forms itself again behind you and then you can see the water kind of drain out uh, of the hall from which uh, to which you have entered tritons that have been swimming in the in the water slowly kind of uh, fall gracefully to the ground and while everything is dripping wet uh, the door opens and you emerge from the um, from the submarine into a I mean, the sea kind of uh, attacks you with, with this scent of salty, wet stone and vegetation. So it's, it's almost overwhelming. Uh, but soon enough, you can see smiling faces of tritons kind of wave at you, go and shake the hands of Audrin, uh, who is his kind of blank expression is still on. Uh, but you can see many pat on, pats on his shoulders, and many of them approach you um, with spe special. Um, how do you call it? Like uh, in like in Hawaii, that they put it on your. A lay. A lay. How? A lay. A lay. Okay. So yeah, they they uh, approach you with these. Uh, Alays, I uh, assume, uh, but they are made of uh, underwater flowers. So they kind of slumped and wet and dripping, but they put it around your necks, uh, saying greetings and, uh, you know, in a in a heavy accent. In common, they say they they call you saviors. Welcome, 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 and in pats on your shoulders and shaking of your hands. Thank you. You've saved us quickly. We don't have a lot of time. Come, come. And they kind of hoard, uh, crowd you, um, pushing you toward one of the exits from this hall. So I, I would have stayed back with Glorp. Um, I assume they don't want him off the ship yet. Um, so you're not sure what they want because there's a, a lot of commotion. But suddenly uh, everyone kind of becomes very, very quiet as a huge... Uh, um, figure kind of pushes its way against the crowd and you see something that is kind of you know very very 
strange to you. Think uh, the bottom of a crab and the, the torso of an elf, basically. So this creature with two pinchers holding, one of them is holding kind of a staff. At the end of it, there's a dangling mass of fluor or something roots. They kind of glow in the, in the air. Um, and the other pincher is um, holding one of those lays. Uh, and he approaches you with a smile on his face and says, Hail heroes, welcome to our kingdom. We don't have much time, but thank you. Thank you. You have saved us. I, 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 I salute him. I say hail. Uh, I, I assume this is a, a Salar. What is the name? Salar, Zarlas. Salar, Zarlas, sorry. Hail Zarlas. Uh, we are... And I introduce ourselves, our names. Uh, we will be happy to speak. We wish to understand what, how did we save you? How did you, how did you, and he kind of turns to his, to his you know, people and, did you hear them? How did, <laughs> and he explodes in laughter and his people around him are kind of, you know, smiling and, and again, patting you on the back. And he says, you have destroyed Iron Slag. You reduced that fortress of the fire giants to rubble. You have sunk in one of their the, the frost giants' longboats. You have visited one of the clouds uh, giants' tower. You have done amazing, wonderful things for the people of of the Sword Coast. What have you done? Come, come. And he pats you on the back and tries to kind of move you toward one of the um one of the exits uh you do notice his gaze at audrin and audrin kind of goes you know and sends two tritons to the nautiloid yeah i'm gonna stay in the nautiloid and make sure that i'm literally adjacent to floor okay uh, um, mm -hmm. i'll 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 go back and make sure Andres doesn't get into any trouble. Yeah, we all hesitantly and awkwardly <laughs> don't leave. We're just like, uh... You, you guys go ahead and enjoy yourself. I'll, don't worry. I'll, I'll, no, you go. You go. Yeah. I'll, I'll protect him. I so, promise. Uh, Thor and Peleus go with them. And uh, yes. go. Uh, Zarlas, uh, if, if we might excuse us for a moment, um, and I turn back and... Like, hurry up! When, when the soldiers approach, mm -hmm. I'll just hold my hands up. Um, my staff is just still standing straight in front of me, like mm -hmm. hovering a little bit. I say, he'll come peacefully. He won't hurt you. Or they will come peacefully. They won't hurt you. Okay. So, um, Zardas kind of realizes that something is off. So he... Raises his hands and says, everyone, our heroes are very tired from their journey. Please let them rest here. I will talk to them and make sure that we all get our share of their glorious stories. But now we have our outpost to defend. You know what's coming. Please get to your posts. And, you know, five minutes afterward, all, all the people kind of disperse, leaving you... Audrin, Zalas, and two Triton soldiers. Um, of course, next to the to the Nauti Nautiloid. And Zalas looks at you and says, What is going on? What happened? Did Audrin spook you to death with his uh, undying commitment to the mission? It's his best quality, I assure you. It was very good. Yeah, I'm sure he makes a very good soldier. But so, uh, we brought... Glorp here to be talked to, not interrogated. The brief participate and give you what Glorp knows, but where I draw the line is torture and death and servitude. So if you have intentions to hurt Glorp, then I think we should just leave. Um, so Zalas looks at all of you and says, Well, you are the heroes 
that did so much for the good of the Sword Coast. And you did it by opposing evil, not by joining it. Or at least so I hope. We are the same. We have our goal. We want to rid this place of evil, a deep ancient evil at that. And we sometimes have to do things that we're not happy with. But we are not torturing anyone or killing people for fun. You have to understand where we came from, what is our history, in order to understand our motives. But you have a history too, you have motives too. Tell me, why have you been running around the Sword Coast trying to avert this disaster posed by the giants? Why have you been researching and investigating the deeds of this creatures we called Mind Flayers? You've, you saw our one of the outposts they raided. Why, why are you doing this? You could be anywhere, living off the richness of the land, the gold that is now sitting in the belly of your ship. Why are you here? We don't want uh, our friends in Neverwinter or in, this, or in the Golden Fields to die. Or the Kingdoms of Elves or, the, or those of the Dwarves. We There's no not... running from this. We want to have a place to retire to. This is exactly what drove us from our home plane. You see, we evolved in a place we call the Abyss. It's a dimension, if you wish, to use the scholarly uh, descriptive word for it. It's made of water. There is no air or sun or land in it. It's a universe that is designed for us, or maybe we are the creatures who are designed for this universe. We don't know. But even in this place, we had pools of darkness, places that no one wanted to gaze into. And from one of those pools, something large, something wicked steered, and using ancient magics known only to this creature, it wrecked havoc in our plane. It changed people. It made them things that... It made of them things that they weren't meant to be deformed, tentacled. Not things that we consider as human, if you wish. And he kind of looks at all of you. So when this thing ripped up a portal and slithered through it, we sent our best men after it. We didn't look back. We knew we were heading to some unknown place. And we landed here in this sea. You have to understand this creature has immense powers. And we have been trying to track it ever since. Ages passed. We passed knowledge from, you know, word to mouth. And now something happened. Something happened. The giants have stirred. And those creatures you called mind flyers have started to stir too. We are not sure why, but we have a deep concern that it is connected to the creature we are hunting. And so we have been investigating. During one of those investigation runs, we had one of our finest generals, General Kamal, construct a vehicle much like the one you have arrived at. We, he created the first submarine of our people and he fell victim to some power. He returned to the outpost and infected other people with his madness. We soon realized that he fell under the influence of that creature, the creature that we dare not name. We are dwindling, my friends. This is the last outpost of our, my people. This creature in your submarine is the only thing that stands between us and total annihilation. 
realizing what it is, why it was constructed and by whom, it is the only way for us to reach our true enemy, that creature that lies deep under the ocean, sending its tentacles everywhere. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I don't think we've experienced that creature before, but is this, and I hold up my ring, my tentacle ring, is this ring uh, related to it some way? Is this a, where is this ring, members of a cult of some sort that worship it? Yes. The people... So my father under its control the people it manipulates wear this ring to identify themselves they have no names they have no faces they have no one thing that binds them together and yet they all act toward one goal the destruction of civilization as we know it what if i told you the entire civilization the entire lives of whatever we have built here together in this world is on the brink of extinction and the information we need to save it is in the mind of that creature and he points to globe i say well then we should work together to get it to tell us what it knows i agree and since our magics have failed to penetrate their veil, we had to call for some external help. Let me present to you our interrogator. And he shifts back, points to one of the room's exits. The doors open and something floats into the room. Pale face white eyes, a tentacled mouth, and fingers, long twitching fingers of the creature you are familiar with, the one calling himself Vostarava. Huh. Uh... We met him at the, at the Xanathar, right? The Xanathar's uh, lair. That's where yes. we met him first, I think. Yes. And then the fire giant. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he's, a, he's a free agent then. But and, can you and be I a free know, agent if you're an And I know it's early, but this is a great way to kind of end this session. We have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, did you watch the game last night? It was really good. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm sure there was some game last night. I don't know. I don't watch more. Well, uh, what, what do you guys are. think? Kill them all and let's sort it out later. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I need a little. I like Anders, um just immediately bonding with this creature. Yeah. I think we should be in the room with the... I mean, we're all going to be inside the room when Vostarava is questioning the Glorp. I don't think we should... And I think, Andres, you should uh, be in constant... Uh, Communication? Uh, you know, telepathic, 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 telepathic link with him while he's undergoing that questioning. Yeah. So have we... Doesn't... I mean point of order have we ever actually talked to Vostrava? only ever seen him no i don't think we ever talked to him we've only seen him uh mm he's -hmm. seen us that's for sure yeah 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 um you've sensed him in the uh first uh triton outpost like that that uh, crazy wizard's lab uh you've spotted it in the giant's castle you've spotted it in um the Zanatar's lair and i think there was another time yeah, in so which you've <laughs> and, yeah, and he might be why they knew so much about it like the new like everything we've done pretty much 
including visiting uh, visiting that uh, cloud giant's tower, which the only people we met there were the dwarves, the weird dwarves that got thrown in by a silver dragon. Those were the only ones that were there. So mm -hmm. that surprised me that they knew about that. Must have been trying. Yeah. Or unless the dwarves were very chatty, or they've got some sort of link to the dwarves. Yeah. Oh, by the way, is Vastarava wearing this the same ring as Andrist? Um. So, uh, if if I described him as wearing that ring, sure, but I, I don't think I ever described any of the Ilthis wearing that right. ring. So. I have a zone of truth prepared today. Good thing. Yeah, um, but it, it, it's looking like we're just gonna get into a room, zone of truth, and then we're gonna say don't torture, and then if they torture, uh, initiative. That's how it's gonna be. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on, just let him torture it and kill it to get the information. What's the big deal? No, let's try to walk the good path. Yes, mm. walk the good path. Get the information, like the like the means to an end and everything. Come on. Yeah, we I'm just about, like, just and, about and, ready and, to mercy kill him. <laughs> just look at the, oh, yeah, yeah, my alignment still serves well for good on my couch sheet. So it's fine. <laughs> I'm good. Totally good. Love uh, and good. Anders, uh, it, it, um, it's only Anders and Rupi that have the rings right now, right? I, I think, think so, yes. Wear it? Yeah, I have one. Like, when, I, when I just stopped, uh, when I stopped getting power from Shantae, uh, I was contacted by probably a Vostarog or somebody, and he was like, look, here's some power, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so now I have this ring. Is yours, yours is enchanted as well? I don't, I have no idea what uh, it even does. It's not that long ago, it was when we were in the uh, forest, uh, the... We were in the, yeah. uh, the Sahwagen caves. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you went, you went full dark. You should have yeah. asked me. I, I can check that out for you. Yeah, but but uh, Rukvia, it's a very good question. Where where do you actually get your powers from? Like we never answer that question in full. So that's like combined with with the knowledge that uh, Zarlas kind of shared. You should be really thinking. I need what's to. Going on. I need to have a talk with Anders. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the people here are totally evil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zarlas didn't rub me the right way. Yeah. You're the only one who's like totally on board with torture and killing. So, me? No, 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 no. Yeah. My farmer friend over yeah. there. Oh. You know, you know the there is um, uh, like a meme going on in Facebook, like in the how uh, D and D groups start and how they end. Like they start Lord of the Rings and they end they end Monty Python. I think this is yeah. one of the first <laughs> groups that it's backward. <laughs> like you, you started Monty Python and now you're all kind of you know cool, powerful <laughs> people with all kinds of quirks and yeah. So uh, I leave you at that. Um, I wish you a very good weekend or what's left of it. And uh, you see you soon. See you soon. Yeah. See you good soon, day. guys. Bye, Shana. 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 Shana.